desire and prayer to the Most High for Israel is that they might be saved. That they might be saved. So he's reiterating what he, he, he started in chapter, verse, uh, chapter 9, verse 1. Read. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of a higher, but not according to knowledge. So we do have a zeal of the Most High. There's no more, there's no other people that are more spiritual than us. We love us from God. We just got to believe in a higher power. That's, that's, that's our thing. Whether it be pagan or whether it be, we have to believe in something. Right? So we do have a zeal of God. Read. For they being ignorant of the Most High's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness. And that's dealing with the Talmud and all that, starting with the commentary. This, well, this is how we have to follow this law mm -hmm. and things of that nature. Read. Have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of the Most High. The righteousness of the Most High. Read. For Yeshua is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. And those that take the Bible studies on Monday should know this because we go over this all the time. The word end means what? Focus or conclusion. Aim. Goal. Christ is the aim of the law for righteousness. So if you want to do the righteousness of the law, who do you have to follow? Christ. Because he fulfilled the law. He did exactly how you're supposed to do the law by the letter. Exactly. Right? So all you got to do is follow his example. Right? That's why Paul says, be a follower of me as I'm a follower of Christ. Right? Let's keep reading. For Moses describeth the righteousness which is of the law. That Moses, the, de Moses described the righteousness. He gave an example on the righteousness of the law. And this is what he said. Read. That the man which doeth those things shall live by them. So the man, if you're going to do it, live by them. Meaning, you know, what's that, that street saying? You know, you're going to uh, ride to die. You're going to. Live for the cause. You're going to, you know, it's, it's about, you're going to keep it real. You're not going to do it half ass. Mm -hmm. If you're going to do it, live by them. And Christ clearly lived by the law. Let's read. But righteousness, which is of faith, speaketh on this wise. Say not in thine heart. And go back to faith, right? Because remember, we didn't have faith. And what is the faith that we were lacking that the most I would sustain us and we keep these commandments? That was the biggest thing. So therefore, when we didn't have faith in the Most High, we started, you know, neglecting the laws a little bit. We started negotiating with the law a little bit because, you know, you know, the Romans, you know, the, you know, the, 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 the Greeks or, you know, the Persians or whatever who was conquering at that time. Well, let's cut a deal with them because we didn't have faith in the law. Right. Or in faith in the Most High that he will bless us if we keep the law. Let's read. Say not in thine heart, who shall ascend into heaven? That is to bring Yeshua down from above. Or who shall descend into the deep? That is to bring Yeshua again from the dead. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee. So what says it? The it is the word. What says the word, right? And this is what Moses is going back to Moses. Let's go to, I think, Deuteronomy 30 and 14. Thirty and fourteen. We all there? We all there, say Khan. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 30, verse 14. But the word is very nigh unto thee, in thy mouth and in thy heart, that thou mayest do it. See, I have set before thee this day life and good and death and evil, in that I command thee this day to love the Most High thy power, to walk in his ways, and to keep his commandments and his statutes. So what is the greatest commandment? Love the most high with all your heart, your mind, your soul. So that's, it, it, you, the old is, 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 or the new is confirming the old. It, it's, it's all one understanding. Read. And his judgments, that thou mayest live and multiply. That thou may what? Thou mayest live and multiply. That was the lack of faith. 
Really? If we keep the Sabbath, we're going to be good? Mm -hmm. That's why Christ says, seek the kingdom of heaven first. That's what you got to do first. Seek the kingdom of heaven first. And the most I will give you what you need. Don't worry about uh, wife or husband, job. And, seek the kingdom of heaven first. You understand? And the most I will give you all that. Read. And the most high thy power shall bless thee in the land whither thou goest to possess it. That's the lack of faith. We didn't have that faith. Read. But if thine heart turn away so that thou wilt not hear, but shall be drawn away and worship other gods and serve them, I denounce unto you this day that ye shall surely perish and that ye shall not prolong your days upon the land whither thou passest over Jordan to go possess it. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore choose life, that thou both, that both thou and thy seed may live, that thou mayest love the Most High thy power, and that thou mayest obey his voice, and that thou mayest cleave unto him, for he is thy life, and the length of thy days, that thou mayest dwell in the land which the Most High swear unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give them. Okay, so let's go back. So that was the faith. We did not have the faith. Then the Most High will sustain us, so therefore we began to negotiate with the law and say, well, let's do it this way, let's do it that way. And that's when that's where we, we began to become ignorant of the law and not establishing the Most High's righteousness. We good? We good? Okay. Let's, let's keep reading. The mic is a little low. Is it me, uh, Shamar? The mic is a little low. Is it me? A little high. But, but. Oh, the, the class? Oh, they're having a class? Okay, okay, that's fine. I see what you're saying. All right, so let's go back to Romans, and we'll be almost done. I want chapter 10 yeah, verse, and 11. Yeah. Chapter 10, verse uh, 10, right? 10, yes. Okay. Sorry, 9. Chapter 10, verse 9, Romans. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Yeshua, and shalt believe in thine heart that the Most High hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. So what the understanding is, is this is not all you need to do because most Christians would go here and say, so that's what you got to do. You know, this is not what it's talking about because Paul was writing a letter. He was not just saying one statement. It's, it's all connected. Let's read. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So with the heart, you're going to say what um, your heart says. You know, it's like, you know when somebody's lying, you know they're lying? You know, it's like, uh, you know, uh, yeah, I'll be there. You can read their heart. You're like, you're right, brother. I'll be there. You know, right at mumbly because you, our people, there's a certain, there's a special connection that the only thing that works for us is righteousness. Wickedness doesn't work with us. We're not good at it. We always get caught. We always, you know, end up. We're not. We're not the other nations. That's their gift. <laughs> you understand? You got, you know, nations, Gentiles, they be corrupt politicians for years. They got away with it. We are sick, you know, you got, you got business people and things of that nature doing all kinds of corruption. Us, it doesn't work for us. We always end up in jail, end up losing our money. And, but wait a minute, Bob, he did it. He, he messed with the taxes and all that. Mm -hmm. Right? He, he, you know, he was caught doing this, caught doing that. We always get caught. So righteousness, if we do righteousness, that is in our natural state of being. Wickedness is, is where, where, where not in our natural state of being. That's why we always get caught. That's why, you know, your woman knows that you're always lying. Because, like, yeah, I was at my friend's house. <laughs> right? <laughs> but the nation, they could be looking straight at you, you know. I will raise no more taxes. You know, they were like, sincere. <laughs> you know, <laughs> nation, you know, you can't have a... <laughs> We were lying. We were like, listen, I want, you know, let's see what happens. <laughs> you know, looking up and you know, looking down. That was it, right? We ain't good with that. That's not our natural being. 
You know, we're about right and correct and exact. Okay, that's what we have to be stay in that, in, in that spirit. Let's read. Verse 11. For the scripture saith, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Come on. For there is no difference between Jew and the Greek. There's no difference between Jew and the Greek. Who has the, the, the Zandabal Bible Dictionary? Anybody has it? Nobody? Uh, oh, okay, give me the, the Greek, uh, the, Hellenist, the word Greek and, and Hellenist, for you can understand, because a lot of people may not understand what exactly, why we keep saying that the Greeks were actually Israelites. Right? Because you can remember, why you keep saying Greeks and Jews? Why I didn't say the Jews and everybody else, right? But it, this is the reason why. So you, when you go into the dictionary, we're going to go into two words, Grecians and also Hellenist. So when you're ready, uh, uh, well, let's keep reading Alam and then uh, Deacon Nakazak, when, when you have it, just let me know. Let's keep reading. Verse 12, for there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. Come on. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And that he's quoting what? In the book of Joel chapter 2. Let's read that real quick. Joel. And we'll start at verse 31. We'll start at, thir at 32. Start there. Joel, chapter 2, verse 32. They all stuck together? Okay. You're almost there, almost there. There you go. You got those, those uh, thin pages, Bible, right. Uh, Deacon Kazak, you got that? Current. This is uh, the Zondervan Bible Dictionary, and this is the word Greek, Greek or Grecian. Uh, it says, Grecia is Greece, the home of the he Hellenes. The Greeks, home of the Hellenists, or the Hellen, read. Greeks and Grecians, however, are to be distinguished. Greeks are generally those of Hellen, Hellenic race. Uh, Greeks are those generally of Hellenistic race. Let's go to the word Hellenist. The word Hellenist. Jews who made Greek their tongue. So the Helen, the word heli, but you when you when you go into the word heli there, you go into the Greek, it means Jews they made their their tongue Greek. Read. Their tongue and with it often adopted Greek ideas and practices. Okay, so these are Hellenistic Jews. That's why they said there's no difference between a Jew and a Greek. That's why Paul says, even us. Not only of the Jews only, but also the Gentile. The word Gentile means people, or the rest of the people, right? Okay, so let's go. Um, Joel chapter 2, verse 32. The book of Joel chapter 2, verse 32. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion, for in Mount Zion, read, and in Jerusalem, for in Jerusalem shall be deliverance. Deliverance, read, as the Lord sa hath said, and in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. In the remnant in whom the Lord shall will call, right? So let's go. And this, when you read the whole entire chapter, is talking about the re restoration of Israel. Okay. So let's go back to Romans chapter 11. And we'll be almost done. All right, we're we actually chapter 10. 
And we're going to end up in chapter 11, which will be the last chapter. All right, so let's read. Verse 13. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him whom they have not believed? So he's referring to the Greeks now because the Greeks now became Greek-speaking Jews, believing in Greek gods and things of that nature. So the question is, how can they believe if they're not, they don't know about the Messiah and what happened in, in Israel? Read. And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? They didn't hear it. Read. And how shall they hear without a preacher? Because you got to remember, the fame of Christ was abroad, what was heard in Jerusalem around that area. Jerusalem is a small area in the world. We have Israelites scattered to the whole world. So, and this is what it is embarrassing or ashamed to the Pharisees, the Jews that were in Jerusalem uh, uh, looking over the temple. Christ was among them, the Messiah, and they rejected him. And you had other Israelites that never heard about the Messiah until much later, until Paul went to travel and things of that nature, and the other apostles went to travel, like Mark and things of that nature, and they accepted Christ. Right? So that's what he's referring to. Read. And how shall they preach except they be sent? Except they be sent. Read. As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tithings of good, of good things. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. They, they have not all obeyed the gospel. Read. For Isaiah saith, Lord, who have believed our report? Who would believe our report? What is he referring to? Isaiah 53, right? So 53, 56, 53, it can't, right? So what is the report he's referring, talking to about Christ? So you, you had Israelite be like, what Christ? He got killed by who? I don't know him. He did what? He was the Messiah, right? So that's what it's talking about. Read. So then faith cometh by hearing. And hearing by the word of the Most High. But I say, have they not heard? Yes, verily. Their sound went into all the earth, and their words unto the ends of the world. So that goes to show you how powerful the apostles need to be. In what era, or aura rather, they need to be in for them to go to total stranger Israelites. And say, listen, the Messiah have come. And we are his disciples. Be baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Right? So, so they, they have to be filled with the Holy Spirit. All right? That's why the Holy Spirit came heavy on that church because they had to be witness. Meaning they had to show the power of Christ to, to convince the people uh, that they are, they, that they're teaching the right gospel. That's why it says the speaking in tongues was for what? Unbelievers. It was not for the believers. So they had to perform these miracles to convince people. Because the Mosai always deal with evidence. That's why when the Mosai sent Moses, even Moses had enough common sense to be like, Father, if I go to these people, they're not going to believe me. All right, Moses, see that staff? Throw it in the ground. Turn to a servant. Pick it up again. Put your hands on your bosom. Turn to lepers. All right, do these same miracles in front of those people. Because that's what they need. We always seek a sign, Right? So the Holy Spirit had to be that sign for the non-believers. Let's keep reading. Verse 19. But I say, did not Israel know? First Moses saith, I will provoke you to jealousy by them that are no people. Okay, now he's going into the Gentiles, the natural Gentiles. Okay? The Most High prophesies in the book of Deuteronomy, I believe 32, when Moses said, listen, says you begin to worship a no God, I'm going to start blessing a no people for you against, uh, uh, instead of you. Read. And by a foolish nation, I will anger you. So not only this is talking about the, the so-called Jews, it's also talking about the Roman Catholics. All the, all the blessings that the, these so-called uh, Christians 
from the Lutheran church, from the Catholic church, from the so-called Jews. These are all Gentiles receiving the blessings that we're supposed to have received. Right? Let's read. But Isaiah is very bold and saith, I found of them that sought me not. I found of them that sought me not. Read. I was made manifest unto them that asked not after me. So he, this is he's in, even um, Isaiah referring to Israel that you had other nations or people that were not of the nation of Israel seeking after Isaiah, but the actual children of Israel were not seeking after the Most High. Right? Let's keep reading. But, verse 21, but to Israel he saith, all day long I have stretched forth my hands unto a disobedient and gainsaying people. Okay, so there now, chapter 9 he gave, he presented all the blessings of Israel, all the things that pertain to Israel, where the vessel fitted for uh, righteousness and, 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 um, and, um, and uh, 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 mercy, right? Chapter 10, he took us down to the mud. Yeah, but you guys have not believed. You guys have rejected the, the Most High. So now the Most High is going to go to a foolish people which are not the most wise people, right? So now chapter 11 is now correcting the Gentiles not to be high-minded. See how the most wise balance? You understand? So we're going to go in now in chapter 9. So now he said, listen, okay, the most wise people are not seeking for the most high, right? Uh, let's chap chap chapter 11, verse 1. I say then, have the most high cast away his people? Because they have not turn to the Most High because they have been disobedient and gainsaying people as the Most High cast away his people. Read. A higher forbid. Absolutely not. Read. For I am also an Israelite of the seed of Abraham of the tribe of Benjamin. So this is proof that he is Paul writing to a church that is dealing with mixed Israelites and Gentiles. He's correcting everything. He's bringing balance to the understanding of why the Gentiles were grafted in. Right? Let's read it. The Most High hath not cast away his people. He has not cast away his people. Which he foreknew. Which he foreknew. Read. Woe ye not what the scripture saith of Elijah, how he maketh intercession to the Most High against Israel. So now Paul is using an example of the Old Testament when Elijah was were, were praying to the Most High and say, Heavenly Father, they have killed your prophet. Well, let's read it. Saying, Lord, they have killed thy prophets and dig down thine altars, and I am left alone, and they seek my life. So at this point, we could clearly see that there was a, a, a much higher conversion of within the Christian church or membership uh, of Gentile much more than Israelites. You understand? And he was comforting the members and saying, listen, although you don't see a lot of Israelites in the churches, but the Mosai still has a remnant. And he's using that as an example. Let's keep reading. But what saith the answer of Ahiah unto him? I have reserved to myself 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee to the image of Baal. Even so then, at this present time, also there is a remnant according to the election of grace. So he's used as an example, and he went back and said, even so then at this present time, he's talking to the Gentiles now, at this present, there's still a remnant among Israel. Read. And if by grace, then is it no more of works. Otherwise, grace is no more grace. But if it be of works, then it is no more grace. Otherwise, work is... It's no more work. And people misunderstand it. See, brother, it's not by the works of the law. That's not what Paul was talking about. What he's saying is, is that the Mosai is going to make us and shift us to do the right thing. So if the Mosai is putting a fire on your right and a, a, a bunch of animals and they're going to eat you up on the, on the left, right? And then he wants you to hit the door and you go to the door. Who really made you go to the door? You? No. You just say, okay, I can't go here because it's fire. There's a greasy bear over here. Ah, right, let me go to the door. 
And you're taking pride. I'm walking to the door. No, it's the most high. You know, I could imagine the angels all day working with us, you know, doing all kinds of things to make sure we don't fall off. All right, okay, it's that girl coming up that he used to like back in high school. Okay, let him, let him uh, hear a sound and get distracted. Okay, there's, a, there's that guy that he's always, you know, likes to hang out when he was in the streets, you know. You know, okay, you got to get, get him with a car. Hit him with a car. Hit him with a car. <laughs> and we're like, oh, I'm righteous. Nah, dude. With all these angels like, oh, you, know, you don't understand, huh? <laughs> I just want to, if you don't make I just want to hear all the stuff with the angels. Brother, let me, let me tell you something, brother. <laughs> you was a handful. <laughs> I have to work overtime for you, brother. <laughs> I want I want to have to kill your kids one time, you know. Because, <laughs> you know. <laughs> right? <laughs> and we're like, really? My God, I thought I was all righteous. Nah, brother. <laughs> the most I said, I need him to come. And then I, I had to do what I had to do. So, so it's not of our righteousness. That's what he was saying. Okay, let's read. Verse 7, what then? Israel hath not obtained that which he seeketh for, but the election hath obtained it. <laughs> it's funny because, you know, you know how Christ says, you know, be caught up your eye and all that. You're going to have a lot of people limb in the kingdom. <laughs> yeah. right, brother, I'm sorry, brother. I had to do that. I had to cut your eye out, you know. <laughs> you made it, though. Okay, you're right. We'll, you can replace. Yeah, we can replace. You have, you know, new body. Let's read it. <laughs> and the rest were blinded. Come on. According as it is written. The Most High have given them the spirit of slumber, eyes that they should not see, and ears that they should not hear unto this day. And David saith, let their table be made a snare, and a trap, and a stumbling block. And that's why you should never freak out when you have situations that you may have a brother or sister that introduce you to the church and the body, and then they're no longer here. Why? It was predestined. Now, they could always come back because that could have been predestined. We don't know. I don't know. But understand that everybody's playing a, a, a role. You understand? Uh, let, I, yeah, he's not chosen, but I want him to follow, you know, stumble through other Ricard's video because I want him to be chosen. And then they're friends. Mm -hmm. They work in the same job. You can't get freaked out with that. They could, and it could be your wife, your husband. Your best friend, your sister, your brother, your father, your mother. Right? He, he could be going back to the world smoking weed and all that. I'm not doing that. It's like crap. Right? Because it was chosen that that's the way you will come to the truth. So don't get freaked out when that happens because that happens a lot. Because your greatest foe will be who? Those in your very household. Right? That's not, you know. And, and that's not a, a, a new thing. That's not like a, a problem. I think in Micah. Let's go to Micah real quick. In the Old Testament. Micah, Micah, Micah. Chapter. If I could find it. Give me one minute. What is my girl? Wait a minute. Yeah. Mm. There we go. Go to chapter. Chapter seven, verse. Verse five. We all there? The book of Micah, chapter 7, verse 5. Trust ye not in a friend. Trust ne ye not in a friend. Read. Put ye not confidence in a guide. Keep the doors keep, of... Uh, uh, keep... Read that again, that, okay. this is the second part. Put ye not confidence in a guide. What's a guide? Someone who's guiding you, right? Read. Keep the doors of thy mouth from her that lieth in thy bosom. So be careful, and even the people that you line you line in your bosom, your, your closest relative, read. For the son dishonoreth the father. The daughter rises up against her mother. The daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A, ma a man's enemies are 
the men of his own house. Come on. Therefore, I will look unto the Most High. I will wait for the Most High of my salvation. My power will hear me. Rejoice not against me, O mine enemy. When I fall, I shall arise. When I sit in darkness, the Most High shall be a light unto me. I will bear the indignation of the Most High, because I have sinned against him. And so he plead my cause and execute judgment for me. He will bring me forth to the light, and I shall behold his righteousness. Okay, so this is not a new concept where Christ says, think not I come to uh, bring peace on the earth, but a sword, right? So let's go back to Romans. And we'll be, we'll end it in Romans 11. We may touch a little 12, but we're going to finish with it. Okay, let's go. Start at verse 10. 11 and 10, Romans. Book of Romans chapter 11, verse 10. Let their eyes be darkened that they may not see and bow down their back always. So Paul was establishing that there's going to be a time that Israel's going to be darkened of understanding. Read. I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? Have they stumbled that they should fall? Read. A higher forbid. A higher forbid. Read. But rather, through their fall, salvation is come unto the Gentiles. Through their fall, then salvation, the most I gave the Gentile an opportunity to say, okay, let's see what you're going to do with the truth. You understand? To provoke us to jealousy. Read. For to provoke them to jealousy. Come on. Now, if the fall of them be the riches of the world and the diminishing of them, the riches of the Gentiles, how much more their fullness? How much more their fullness? When they do, they come back to their glory. Read. I mean, I mean the Israelites. Read. For I shall speak to you Gentiles, inasmuch as I am the apostle of the Gentiles. Right. So he is saying now he is, because the word there, Gentile, means people. So in this context, because he referred to uh, provoke the, uh, the children of Israel to jealousy, now he, the people here is referring to the people of non-Israelite descent. Read. I magnify mine office. Come on. If by any means I may provoke to emulation them which are my flesh. You see that? Then in my flesh is talking about Israelites. So now we know that the people here, the, I think the Greek word is ethnos, the people here is non-Israelite people. Read. And might save some of them. And might save some of them. Read. For if the casting away of them be the reconciliation. So what Paul was telling them is like, I'm here preaching to you Gentiles in a hope that I could provoke my people to jealousy, right? But they could witness and see the blessings of the Gentiles being received, being, uh, receiving the, gen the, the blessings of the Most High and provoke them to jealousy. Like, you know what? Maybe Christ is the Messiah. You understand? Let's read. For if the casting away of them be the reconciling of the world. Come on. What shall be the receiving of them be but life from the dead? Come on. For if the first fruit be holy, if the first fruit be holy, the lump is also holy. The lump is also holy. Read. And if the root be holy, if the root be holy, so are the branches. So are the branches. So meaning the most, these are still God chosen people, although these branches are not doing the right thing. Read. And if some of the branches be broken off, and some of the branches who's not doing the right thing was, was removed or cut off. Read. And thou being a wild olive tree. And you being a wild olive tree. Were grafted in among them. Uh-huh. And with them partakest of the root and fatness of the olive tree. Now you're getting the blessings of the, uh, of the Most High because you, you, part, you partook on the blessings. Read. Boast not against the branches. So see now how you see in chapter 11. Now he's now, first he was trashing on Israel. How bad and wicked they were. Now he said, okay, Gentiles, be humble because... The, the, the children of Israel are still chosen, although they are, uh, are not converting in the same manner uh, as you are. Read. But if thou boast, thou bearest not the root, but the root thee. You don't, you, it's not the other way. Uh, you're being supported by the root. The root is not being supported by you. Read. Thou will say then, the branches were broken off. This is the boasting. The, the, uh, uh, the branches were broken off. Read. That I might be grafted in. Uh-huh. Well, because of unbelief, they were broken off. Come on. And thou, and thou standest by faith, 
Be not high-minded, but fear. So the believing in what? In the scriptures, right? So that was the reason why they were cut off. Now, so when the Gentiles are coming in, and they don't believe in the scriptures, the entire scriptures, not only the commandments, not only that Christ is the Messiah, not only that, you know, all the prophets dealing in, in the New and the Old Testament, but also that God had a chosen people. You have to believe the entire book, not only certain aspects of the book. Read verse 21. For if the Most High spared not the natural branches, take heed lest he also spare not thee. Come on. Behold, therefore, the goodness and severity of the Most High on them which fell, severity, but toward thee, goodness, if thou continue in his goodness, otherwise thou also shall be cut off. And they also, if they abide not still in unbelief, shall be grafted in, for the Most High is able to graft them in again. For if thou wert cut out of the olive tree. So remember when he was, I was talking about, although they're not dealing with unbelief, the Most High will able to graft them in again. Now, how does the Most High could graft someone in if they dwell in unbelief? How could he? How how does the Most High will grant you in? And I think I touched on this on, on, on the whole fire and the and, and the straight line and he's gonna make you. <laughs> you understand? So you could be a wicked as hell, but if you're chosen of the elect, the Most High is gonna you know have to. Okay, he's he's a stubborn one. Uh, bring five angels to him, curse him, kill his family, lose his job. You know, right? Do what it has to be done because he's a chosen seed. So even in that stage, the most I could, could. Now, the man himself, he doesn't, or the woman, they think it's just like, okay, I got to get my life right. I got to do the right thing. I, let me serve the most high. But it's really the most high making him or her serve him. So that's what, I, that's what Paul was saying. Even in, in the unrelieved, the most I could grab them in back. Read. Verse 24. For thou were cut out of the olive tree, which is wild by nature, and were grafted contrary to nature into a good olive tree. How much more shall these, which be the natural branches, be grafted into their own olive tree? So see, in chapter 10, he was coming in on Israel. Now he's coming on the Gentiles. So he straightened everything out. Balance, right? Read. For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, lest ye should be wise in your own conceits, that the blindness in part is happened to Israel. In blindness in part has happened to Israel, read. Until the fullness of the Gentiles become in. So until a certain number of the Gentiles become in, a certain blindness has happened to Israel. So you're, per, you're, you're fulfilling a prophecy and you're really a pawn in the Mosai's chess game to provoke Israel to jealousy. So stay humble, right? And, 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 and Israel, you stay humble because just because you got chosen people does not mean I will not uh, curse you if you, if you uh, disobey my commandment. Read. And so all Israel shall be saved. Meaning the 12 tribe of Israel, not every single Israelite because a red male shall be saved. Read. As it is written, there shall come out of Zion the deliverer and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. For this is my covenant unto them. You see that? So remember when a covenant is not only like a contract, that once you break it, it, it it's no longer valid. A covenant is agreement. It, it, it's, it's, I will do this for you if you do this for me. And, and, and so that's the covenant, the most high, and it's an everlasting covenant. Read. For this is my covenant unto them, when I shall take away their sins. As concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sakes. So concerning the truth, they are enemy for your sakes. So this is, these are Paul speaking to Gentiles. So listen, I know they are against the gospel of Christ. They are your enemy for that sake. Read. But as touching the election. But touching the election of the, of the Most High. Read. They are beloved for the Father's sakes. They are beloved for the Father's sakes. So they're still beloved for the Father's sake. Read. For the gifts and calling of the Most High are without repentance. What is that saying? The gifts and calling of the Most High is without repentance. 
Right. So if the most I say, ye are my people, and I'm your God, and you're my children, I will bless you above all people, he, that, that's that, you know, he's not going to renege that. In the, um, yeah. the Greek, it says irrevocable. 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 Right. You can't bring yeah. it back. You can't bring it back. Read. Verse 30. For as ye in times past have not believed the Most High. As ye in time past have not believed the Most High. He's referring to the Gentiles. Read. Yet have now obtained mercy. But yet now obtained mercy. Read. Through their unbelief. Because they were wicked as hell. Right. Read. Even so have these also now not believed that through your mercy. Through your mercy, Gentiles, I could then do what? They also may obtain mercy. May obtain mercies. Read. For the Most High hath concluded them all in unbelief. Give me the word them in the Greek. Because really the word them is not a proper uh, translation. I would say uh, the better uh, translation would be us. He conclude all of us, Jew and Gentiles, wicked. That's what it's talking about. Let me know when you got it, Shamar. Uh, keep reading. Uh, give me chapter and verse. Romans chapter 11, verse 33. Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of the Most High. How unsearchable. Go back into it says, uh, for her, um, concluding. concluding, yeah. Okay. Verse 32. And put the, instead of the word them, put the word us. For you can, it, it gives them more understanding when he, what he was saying here. Read. For the Most High hath concluded us all in unbelief, that he might have mercy upon all. You get what I'm saying? So now he's bringing balance. You don't get boasted Israelites, you don't get boasted Gentiles, because both of you guys are, um, are, are wicked. Uh, Shamar, you got that? That word doesn't even exist in the Greek. Uh, go, uh, because sometimes you're limited. I'm on the Esau. The Esau, yeah. does it have the word them there? No, nah, them all. So them all? Yeah. So them all is one word? Yes. Okay, so give me that word. Uh, this is the word for them all. The word is past. And the word, the, the uh, Greek number is 3956, and it means all, any, whole, all, as many, whatsoever, whole, whosoever. Right. So therefore, if you remove the word all, um, them, because the word there, I think them was added there, and the word them and all is one Greek word, so you just put the word all. Right, for you to understand. For the Most High hath concluded all in unbelief, that he might have mercy upon all. See, so you got what I'm saying. Meaning, it, 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 it's, it's saying the Jews and the Gentiles. You know, so he brought both cases. Why they, why he provoked us to judge and brought in and grafted in the Gentiles. And why the Gentiles should not boast against the natural branches, because both of us are wicked. Okay, and, and, and the only way we could be saved is through his mercy. Okay. Uh, right. Right, when, when the most high, it, it, brother, uh, 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 in Psalms 50, 50, 51, it says that the most high include all humanity. He looked down upon heaven and he said everybody is wicked. Everything is, 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 is off. So no one could take to get boast and say we're righteous. Let's read. Romans chapter 11, verse 33. Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of the Most High. So you see his knowledge and wisdom. Is just, he did all this to show a, a, a lesson. It's all about his program. He, he, he is the one shifting the, the wheel. Read. How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. Come on. So you can't, that's why his way of uh, finding out, you can't figure him out. So you can't, he was, he was telling the Jews and the Gentiles, everybody calm down, because really it's about his will. It's, it's really when it all goes down to it, it's about his will, his will to be done on earth. And we are just, we have to just understand that we are his workmanship, right? Uh, let's keep reading. Verse 34, for who hath known the mind of the Most High, or who hath been his counselor, or who hath first given to him, and it shall be recompense unto him again. For of him 
and through him and to him are all things. To whom be glory forever. Amen. Okay. So let's read chapter 12, verse 1 and 2, and we end it there. Verse 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of Ahiah, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice. So that's, the, that's the, uh, the conclusion of the matter, so to speak, in a sense of it's all about sacrifice. It's all about running that race, whether you're Jew or Gentiles. It's of being to the mo- obedient to the Most High and understanding that he, you are basically his, his workmanship. Read. Holy. Holy. Acceptable unto the Most High. Acceptable unto the Most High. Read. Which is your reasonable service. Which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world. And be what? Be not conformed to this world. And be what? And be not conformed to this world. Come on. But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Of your mind. You gotta. You can't think like you used to think. You know, and I know you're going to go through your sin uh, withdrawal. You're going to... You need some AA meetings. This is your AA meeting. Hi, I'm a Uncle Ba Yesha Allah. I'm a sinner. I've been sin free since I don't know. What was my last sin? I can't remember. Right? Be renewed of your mind. Read. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Come on. That ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of the Most High. Amen. So give the Most High a hand. 